What up YouTube, your boy Mr. Instagram here today. I've got a little Apple update for you and today is the Australian version. So just a little progress update. Today we are going to be painting. So I have pretty much set up all the areas which I want tarmac So I'm gonna paint it all up and uh, I'm gonna do a nice little time lapse. But first of all, I'm just gonna run through pretty much all the layouts. So basic. We have the runway here, then the little taxiway and still the wide body taxiway, but a little uh, difference that I've done uh, since the original video. So originally the wide body kind of sat here if it came in. So it would be that way, only having one operational stand. So now the wide body goes, I've added another regional stand. So now there is a total of four and narrow body stands. This stand here, the wide body would park at. So it parks that, which only disables this stand. So we now have two operational stands when the wide body's in and the wide body, when it pushes back, which it will do now, it pushes back that way, which still keeps the stand clear, which is always good. Um, terminal layout, I'll discuss the terminal later. It's pretty much this kind of shape here. So there'll be a glass walkway, the main terminal there. Uh, then we go onto the land side area. In case you're wondering what this little area is, so this is the uh, departing baggage. So I'm kind of laid it out. So departures is kind of this area here. Then arrivals is here and vice versa. Then coming, moving down onto this way. We have a single road uh, with an entry point to the landside area and an exit point here. Then we'll just have like a generic car park, maybe a hotel in this space, but the majority, um, majority of this area here is all gonna be green and I might add a little coastline kind of going about there. Still haven't 100% decided on that yet. Um, but, Moving on to the painting side of things, which is always the exciting bit. So I watched Aviation 18's video when he did his Dulles Airport. He's used frog tape and I've heard only good things about it. So I thought I'd give it a go. So I picked it up on Amazon for, I think it was um, eight, seven pound or so. Um, so we're gonna give this a go. Hopefully we give us really really nice lines so that's the tape we're using uh any so what well, actually before i move on tape wise so i'm using the frog tape for the immediate um covering so all, all the lines is frog tape then kind of in between the frog tape i'm using just standard double-sided stick not double-sided a uh, two inch masking tape so hopefully we shouldn't get any bleed through that. Sorry, the room's a bit of a mess at the moment. Um, kind of cars in for a service. So I've had to take all the stuff out of my boot and uh, pop it in here. So main paints we have from all acquired from um, Thingy B and Q. But I'm sure you can get them at your local uh, retailer or, or something similar. So we've got four primary paints. So graphite, which I think is a bit too dark. I'm going to be doing a little bit of mixing um, here. So I think that's a bit too dark for what I want for. But that will be predominantly the runway. Then this is Rust Oldham um, chalky finish. So I don't know how it's going to come out. Well, I'm not sure we're going to find out. But it's a matte finish and that's uh, anthurite however you say it, um, which looks a little bit darker, kind of like a medium grey. Um, hopefully when I still any mixing with this, I'll of course see what it's like in the palette um, when we do it. And uh, then the next one is just a standard smooth um, matte kind of furniture paint. This is all furniture paint. Uh, this is called Long Island and this is um, B&Q's own brand. Um, which is kind of a medium. 
so it's a tiny bit lighter than the m -Fryte. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna mix a little bit of this in to the graphite to make the graphite a little bit, um, a little bit lighter, just because at the moment I think that just looks a bit too dark. What I'm gonna do is mix it directly into the tin because I know the, the cat could jump on the airport, which I'm gonna have to close the door so she doesn't jump on the paint. Um, I know with my old, my other airport, it was a right pain because uh, I've had to, I had to mix up the um, the lighter grey. It was a right pain because every coat was different because the ratio between the paints was um, ever so slightly different. So each layer was different. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to avoid. So by mixing directly into the tin, no matter how much between coats, it's never going to change kind of thing. Um, and but moving on from that, the next, the uh, next, what we have is brilliant white, which will be for all the runway markings. Because I, I tried originally with my paint pens to do the runway markings, but it just didn't look very nice at all in the original airport. So I've moved, I'm going to move that on to normal paint. Um, so I think I'll be mainly using, as so graphite for the main runway. And try everything else, and then I'll pop in some little squares here and there of other bits and bobs. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's see how this pans out, and I'll get a cure time lapse with some uh, copyright-free music because you know I've got to have it some kind of style. So uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video. So welcome back, we're now on a new day. And uh, as you can tell, this uh, the runway's now been painted. I can now see why I call it the chalk effect, it does feel kind of, it doesn't bring up anything on your thing, on your hand, but it does kind of feel a bit chalky. Um, so I'm, not, I'm still in two minds, I've been not thinking about it overnight, but um, whether the, the gray I've used is too dark still. Um, so basically what I did, when mixing so the original color really hasn't changed at all even though i put in near enough a whole pot of this brilliant white so normally i think brilliant um a white paint would really done down the color a bit there really it just hasn't i think it's like the white paint has just gone missing in the tin um which is quite weird so i'm going to see what it looks like um when I do the remainder of the board, um, when I do like all the taxiways and everything in uh, in this cover here. So I'm going to see what that looks like and then we'll take it from there. If it's still too dark, um, then I have to go back over the runway uh, with something else. But basically, the whole thing separating the runway from the taxiways is two bits of green tape. So. Um, Apart from that, these are the only two bits I've got to take off to access the, the rest of the airport. So we're, um, we'll see how it goes and I'll set up another time lapse so you can see me uh, painting the, the taxiways and everything. So stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching so far. The second coat of the lighter grey on the apron has uh, kind of been finished and is now dried. Um, so now we are on pretty much just the land side areas of the roads, which is going to be a slightly lighter grey. Um, I might put a few little patches here and there onto the apron. Um, actually, I might. I'll leave that for now. I'm just going to do the lighter bit of the land side, and then will pretty much be all the painting done, hopefully. So then it's just a kind of set the stage to just put the grass on and pretty much see how everything looks after that. So it is uh, five to eight now. So I'll get the lighter gray done and then I'll probably do another coat in the morning um, just to kind of finish it off. So fingers crossed by kind of midday tomorrow, everything should be painted and all dried. So 
Um, I'm really pleased on how this light gray has come out. I'm just worried to see what it's going to look like once you take off the um, the mask and tape off the runway. But we'll find out um, when that happens. So I'll set up another time lapse, and for the final bit, I shall uh, see you later in the video. So it's been about 10 hours since the uh, the coat. It's now a new day. It's going to be a very, very sunny and hot day up in Manchester. So all the paint's done now, hopefully anyway, all the primary paint. I still might put a few splodges here and there of, um, of this lighter grey to add like a bit of immersion or anything like that. But um, overall, really happy on how it comes out. So it's now going to be the fun job of... Um, well, try to work out where all my markings went, so that's always going to be good. Um, I've got a rough idea on on how the stands were. I did the stupid thing with this airport, and I do regret it now thinking about it, is where I, I normally, when I'm designing an airport, I will um, get like a little book and go through like the whole draw out basically the how um how the airport looks so for this one i knew it was going to be like an l shape originally without this board here um i know i was going to have like a a little bit like that kind of thing um so i drew it all out on a piece of paper all the measurements everything so when it came came to it came to the painting it was just straight easy. I just copy the measurements, put them back on the board. This one, I forgot to take down majority of the measurements. So it's gonna kind of be like day one in a way of working out whereabouts everything went. Luckily, I've got the terminal dimensions. So what I'm probably gonna do is work out where the terminal was. Then I can work out where the walkway was. And then I can work out where the road because the road um the road system hugged the terminal for two centimeters and then that road system then um pretty much guides the whole way back to where the stands were i can remember i'm probably going to do a bit a few rough paper um, rough measurements of the stands i can just faintly remember them um so that'll make it a little bit easier. Um, so going with how the paint's gone so far, haven't ripped up any tape yet, but there's a few little bits here and there. There's some bits on this. There's some bits on this um this main board from a bit like where the hell have you come from? Like a little bit there, a little bit up there. I'm not too sure whether or not I'll give that another coat. That's, that's only the quick dry stuff. Just kind of delays everything though. Sure, bit up here anyway, that'll be covered by a walkway, and you won't really be able to see that bit. Apart from the road, uh, there's a few little bits here, but you can definitely feel the difference in the kind of the type of paint. This is a lot smoother, uh, and this is a bit rougher. So, that velvety smooth furniture paint really is velvety smooth. Um, I'm really happy on how that's come out. So we're going to see all the different colours um, when we get to it. So thank you for watching so far. I know it's a bit of a longer video than usual. Um, but I'll rip up the tape and pretty much I'll probably call that a day. So let's roll on yet another time lapse. So with all the tape off, I'm uh, relatively impressed with the results of the frog tape. It does, 
it definitely avoids any bleed. Uh, so these lines are all uh, proper sharp. The only ones that aren't are the um, corner ones where of course I had to fold the tape over or something like that. Um, but looking at the paint, so there's a little bit of, I'm now seeing the issue of having like a chalk effect paint is the second you scratch it, it kind of, um, kind of leaves a marking. So if you can just see there, something's, when I, when I was brushing it off, obviously something scratched it. So it's made a line. So I'd definitely recommend um, using something like this. Uh, this is the land side area. Velvety smooth furniture paint rather than the um, chalk effect paint. Just on the basis of this airport's probably gonna get scratched a fair bit, especially when I'm taking it in our storage, which is that, um, this just makes me feel horrible whenever the cat's walking on the airport. Um, when I'm bringing it in our storage, it's probably gonna get scratched a fair bit. So I might get a, um, try and get a clear coat or something just to shove over the top once it's all painted. Um, Overall, uh, as I said, I'm impressed with the results and hopefully uh, doing all the lines and everything shouldn't take too long, so. Um, hopefully it won't take too long to get this going. I've got some grass, I don't think it'll be enough, so I might need to order some more. Um, and I've got some ripple effect water, well, water ripple effect um sheets coming so it basically looks like a little pvc sheet um that's been cut or etched uh, to have little waves in it and it comes with a little blue background so that'd be perfect for here um the australian side i'm still i'm still not in two minds of which way to go with the australian air for whether or not to keep it uh to have a bit of water there or um, I might just flip over the other side of this board um, and have another airport. So uh, that's still to be decided. It's still to be decided whether I'm going to use this one for the Australian and European or just solely Australian. Um, but thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, the next one will probably be me re, uh, redrawing all my lines. So I'm going to go through all my dimensions and everything. Um, just to kind of keep you guys in the loop and for a bit of um, helping. Um, so I think this is it's kind of a airport building tutorial which has been requested. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Adios and goodbye.